At this time, we'd, we'd like to welcome the Grambling State Tigers as uh, first trip to the NCAA tournament and the uh, first win in the NCAA tournament as they go on to beat Montana State here tonight, 88-81. Join us on the stage. Uh, Jordan Smith had 18 points, 9 rebounds. Jamil Kofer was huge in the second half, 19 points off the bench. He was 7 of 9 from the field. And uh, the head coach of uh, Grambling State, Dante Jackson. Uh, before we start with questions for our student athletes, Coach, uh, what this means to your program and how your team performed here tonight? Uh, first, I just want to give a lot of credit to uh, Coach Logie and Montana State. Man, they, they were incredible today. I mean, they just shot the cover off the ball. Incredible. Uh, just the offense they ran, the way they moved the ball. Just got a lot of respect for him and what he do. Uh, what this mean for our program? It's an understatement, to be totally honest. I couldn't even tell you, man. To play on, play in the NCAA tournament, get a first round win, man, this is just amazing. And I just think that it's just major exposure for our program, and just, just, just let these guys know when they could have went to all these other big schools and things of that nature that they, they chose right by coming to Grambling, and, and just, just really thankful, you know, just all our guys that's, that's here, and and just the way they prepared and how they played today. We'll open up the floor. Uh, first questions for our student athletes. Let's go to the second row uh, on the end. Sorry, Adam Rittenberg with ESPN. Jamil, what was kind of going through your mind after the first half? Don't play at all. You know, you didn't play in the last game either. And then obviously, what, what kind of went into that huge second half that you had? Uh, to be honest, nothing was really going through my mind. I was just trying to stay locked in the whole time. Even when I'm not playing, I'm, I'm locked in on the game because I know eventually my name's going to be called. And once I'm out there, I got to do what I have to do. Stay in the second row in the middle. Austin Parr with uh, SWX Montana. Coach, uh, you spoke the other day about, you know, of course they put us against the hottest team in the country. They came out like it in the first half. Uh, what were the adjustments? How did you change up the game plan at halftime? Well, you know, actually, it, it wasn't any adjustments. Well, the first adjustment was we had to guard the ball screen better. Uh, we had to do a better job of getting in their bodies and controlling the ball screen. And uh, the main thing was when I walked in that locker room, they had already made the adjustments. And, and that's, that, that's the best part about having a team that's led at times by the seniors. And they knew what, they knew what the magnitude of this was and us going out here and competing at a high level. First, uh, just questions for our student athletes. We'll get to coach. Um, let's go to the first row on the end, right behind you. You got it. Travis Williams, HBCU All-Stars. Jordan, last go around. What does this game of this magnitude mean for you on birth, both a personal, but also the culture of HBCU basketball? The world was watching. What does this uh, win mean for you and being a part of this? Um, personally, you know, it's just with this being my senior year and with everything we got going on, I just didn't want this to be our last game, especially the way things are going right now. So, you know, as a, as a player, for playing with this type of team, with this great type of team, it was just I had to get my all to do that. And for the culture, it's, just, it's the same thing. You know, that's even more of a, that's even more of a reason for me to fight harder. You know, I got people, I got family that I haven't heard from that I, I wasn't just wasn't able to see in a while, and they finally reaching out and saying they they watching me play and things like that. You know, so when it's when it's people like that reaching out to you, that means even this means even more people that's watching that I don't know. So I just got to give them a show and give them my all. Third row. Two questions. The first one is, when they went on the run, what did you guys say to each other uh, at halftime? And then what was the vibe like playing in the arena? Jordan? Um, when they went on the run, it was at halftime, it was, a lot of, it was a lot of mixed emotion going on. There was a lot of arguing at first. But you know, like I said um, last week, that we're a team that once we argue, five, ten minutes later, it might not even be five minutes. We're gonna get back, we're gonna high five. It's all about adjustment. So we know we know where we're coming from. So it was just it was just mixing most of the things like that. And Jordan, the atmosphere in the arena. Um, the atmosphere it wasn't it wasn't too much different from us, you know. Like Coach said, he 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 made the schedule that he made this year for a reason. So I mean, when we came in here, we know what we were coming into. So the atmosphere wasn't too much different. And then uh, Jamel, the uh, sort of halftime, and then the atmosphere. Uh, at halftime, we, we, it was just somewhere we already been before. We knew, we knew what we had to do. And then uh, the atmosphere, like you said, we we played a big schedule in the uh, regular season, so it wasn't nothing new. Just a couple more questions for our student athletes. Let's go to the second row. 
Parker Cotton with the Bozeman Daily Chronicle. Jamel, you had the uh, tying layup near the end of regulation. Uh, you take Robert Ford to the basket. Is that an intentional play call, that kind of switch to go at him with four fouls, or is that just who happened to be in front of you? Just who, that was just who happened to be in front of me at the time. Let's go to the uh, first row. First row on the end. Uh, Jordan and Kofi. What it's like playing for one of the best coaches in the country, not just black college basketball, one of the best coaches in the country? Jordan? I mean, I love it, man. That's, that's, the, reason I, that's the reason I like transferring. Never been, never been in my mind ever since I've been here. You know, coach has always been a guy who's going to show you love. He's going to let you do your thing, but at the same time, he's not going to make sure you get outside of what you do. He's going to put you in the right situation to make you be, make you be uh, perfect, you know? So, and then at the same time, he's, gonna, he's an honest guy. He's a truthful guy. He's going to keep it hunting with you. So there's nothing else you really can ask for him out of him. Jamil, any thoughts on Coach? Uh, same here. It's just a lot of knowledge. You you know, you ask some questions, he's going to give you the answer. It's the best answer he can give you. Jamil, Jordan, uh, fantastic showing. It was so much fun watching you. Best of luck. Safe trips to Indy for Friday. Thank you. Thank you. All right, now we'll open up the floor. Gentlemen, you are free to leave if you'd like. Um, we'll uh, open up the floor. Questions for Coach. Let's start in the first row here in the middle. Coach, Ken Rashad, HBC Sports. Um, explain what the reasoning, what, what led you to, to uh, call Jamil into the game? Uh, we needed to be bigger on the court. Uh, I felt like at that point in time, uh, Contavious was playing well. Uh, he had a few bad ball screen coverages, and we wanted to be a little bit more bigger, a little bit more athletic. And, you know, Jamel has been playing his butt off, and every day I tell him, just be ready, just be ready. You know, he had a game uh, right, in, uh, right in our tournament where he came in and sparked us. And, you know, he's, he's been a big spark. And the tough part of it is we got really good guards, and it's a lot of depth, and sometimes seniors are there, and they've been in those moments. but. You know, he's a sophomore. Michael Stevens a sophomore. Uh, Antoine Barnett's a sophomore. Those guys are young guys. And sometimes you just got to let them play. Let them play through the mistakes. And today he got hot and I'm just, just really proud of him rising to the occasion. We'll go in the back. Question for Coach. Tyler Smith, WECI 91.5 FM. Coach, around the 12-20 mark, right before that timeout, it seemed like something switched coming out of the break. What was the message to the team? You guys came out of a little bit of a full court press. What was the message of that moment? And that really changed the game. What's your message there? Uh, I want to say at that point in time, we might have been down maybe six, if I'm not mistaken. And I told him at that point in time, it's a two-possession, maybe three-possession game. We right where we want to be. And if we can get a stop, one or two stops right here, a uh, stop and score, the pressure on them. Like, we, like we were down nine at half. And we found a way to get that, that turnover, and that turnover went for a layup, uh, a little bit more pressure. And then later in the game, uh, Ford had three and four fouls, and we wanted to try to attack him because on the other end, he was punishing us. So we were, like, we were just trying to make sure we can attack him. And, uh, you know, Kofer and Jamel did a great job of getting downhill several different times on him and worked to our advantage. A fourth row on the aisle. Coach O.Z. Davis, Cincinnati Enquirer. Congratulations, Tay. I love you, man. It was, Thank uh, you. I love you too, Uncle. It's, it's, it's something special to be here. Tell me, um, there was a point right there in the beginning of the second half where you thought about going zone. Tell me, I mean, you got out of it quick, but tell me what the thought process was uh, to go to try zone against them. Well, I felt coming in out of the half, they were playing so well, uh, moving the ball against our man. And I just wanted to try to just give uh, an illusion of making them have to think about something else. And then we showed the zone. And once we showed the zone, we jumped right back into man. Because the other part of it is it will slow down their offense. And then we can get into that ball screen later, like earlier, and just defend maybe one action of a ball screen instead of defending multiple. A question on the outside, same microphone. George Montgomery, Fox Sports National Radio. Dante, I don't know how much you've thought about Purdue, but the last three years they've gotten beat by double-digit seeds, I believe 13, 15, and 16. Um, what's your thought process of playing them, and what, what do you have to do to continue the trend that the other three schools have done? Well, my first thought process is Coach Painter is one of the best coaches in the country, <laughs> first and foremost, and uh, they're going to be ready to play. I, I'm, I'm sure Coach Painter had them ready to play. Uh, 
my thought process on trying to beat them, I need to go watch more film and, and, and try to devise a plan and figure out what we need to do, you know, because that's one of the, they're not the number one seed for nothing. They got the best big guy in the country. We got to come ready to play. So a little film tonight, well, a lot of film tonight. Might not get, I ain't been sleeping much anyway, so <laughs> might not get much sleep, but it is what it is. The first row on the aisle. Uh, Travis Williams, HBCU All-Stars. Coach, what was your message to the guys in the locker room after a game of this magnitude? What was the message to your guys? I'm just extremely proud of y'all and happy for y'all. I'm happy for our program. I'm just proud of y'all. You know, I know those guys, they don't have any quit in them. And it's a lot of fight in them. And, you know, I told them our life been built off adversity. You know, I got a lot of guys that come from underprivileged situations and things of that nature. And adversity is part of life. And it's about how you bounce back when you get in a bad situation. And you got to keep your head up no matter how bad it gets. And you got to keep pushing and you got to keep pulling and you got to keep going in the right direction. And I told them, we're going to play defense. Y'all figured out the plays. We, you know, it's one thing to scout and go through the plays. It's another thing for them to run the plays at, they, at the pace that they run them at and shoot the ball at the pace they shoot it at. But at the end of the day, we locked in and those guys found a way to get it done. Unfortunately, only one more question for Coach. Uh, let's go to Jeff on the end. Uh, Jeff Gilbert, Dayton Daily News. Coach, to be a special night like this, to be able to do it in Dayton, talk. what, what can you say about that, being back in this area? Uh, it's special. Uh, like I, I told uh, maybe the earlier press conference, uh, I became a man in Dayton. Uh, now I remember my uncle dropping me off to Central State University. Uh, I transferred from Wisconsin, Milwaukee. Was there for two years playing basketball. Uh, probably one uh, making the best decisions in life. And then I came over to Central State uh, and they just gave me the foundation to be who I am. I met my wife here in Dayton, uh, had my kids here in Dayton. Then you turn around and my, my former team and my former players are here from Central State. A uh, little tidbit about me, I actually coach tennis also. <laughs> so I got tennis players in the crowd. I got former basketball players in the crowd. I got friends and family in the crowd. And some of my best relationships in life are from my teammates that, that, that live here in Dayton or that I met here in Dayton. So Dayton is a second home. Dayton is, they, Dayton is special. You know, just, just meeting my wife alone. Like, it's, it's special just being here in Dayton. Coach, we've enjoyed having you so much back in the 937. A historic moment for your program. Congratulations. Best of luck on Friday. Thank you, Alex. I appreciate you. All right. The thoughts of the head coach, Dante Jackson.